Hello everyone! I'm going to show you how to put trees on a mountain just like this by using PCG Graph. These trees are separated by height, with sparse coverage on high Z level and thicker coverage on a lower Z level. I've already created this mountain, but if you don't have one you can simply create a new open world map and paint a mountain in with the landscape tool. You'll also need the Procedural Content Generation Framework plugin, so if you don't see the PCG Graph, you can add it by going to Edit, Plugins, and searching for Procedural. Let's get to it! Right-click in your content browser to create a PCG Graph. I'm going to name mine PCG underscore Mountain Trees Tutorial, and drag and drop it into the level. Since I'm using a single graph for this, I'm just going to zero out its position and scale it to cover the entire level. Yeah, that seems big enough. Now, let's open the graph. The first thing I'll do is add a surface sampler node connected to landscape height. This will place points all over the landscape, which I'll use as the basis for everything. Then the important node for this tutorial, the point filter. Point filter lets you access a bunch of the properties you pull in from the landscape node. In this case, I'm going to select position. Position is a vector, and I only want the z-axis, so I'll type period and z after it to access the z-variable. Next, I want to filter on a fixed value, so I'm going to check Use Constant Threshold and select Float. I've got my height filter. I'm going to start with 7,000 units, because I know that's about the height of my lower border between ground and snow. You'll notice if you debug this node, it doesn't look like it's working. That's because you need to connect another node to it to see the results. I think it's showing you both the inside and outside results by default. So I'll look up a transform points node here, and there we go. I don't want these trees to go all the way up to the top of the mountain. They should stop at the snow line here, so let me add another point filter. You can hold down control to disconnect a link and pop it onto a new node. I'll filter on position.z just like the last one, but this time I'm setting it to less than. make it a constant and float, and I'll set it to... let's start with 14,000 units. Hook the transform points node back in and debug it to see the results. Let's take a look. That's removed the top, and now I have a band of trees. Now there's a peak that I want to make sure the top line is just below. I think I can lower it a bit, so let's try 13,000. That looks good. I'll take a look at the bottom line. That looks a little low, so 7,500. Great. Looking at this band of trees, it seems a little too crisp. I'm going to add a little randomness to it. In this transform node, let's set the x and y to plus and minus 500. And while I'm at it, I'll set the rotation between 0 and 360 to let those trees face any direction. And I'll also set the scale to 0.8 to 1.5, because that seems to be a decent size range for these trees. Looking at these points, you can see they're now floating off the ground. Now that's good, because I'm going to drop them down, and that'll add the randomness I'm looking for. To do that, use a projection node and connect the projection target up to the landscape height. I'll debug this to check. And there! They're all on the surface again, and the edge looks a lot less crisp. Here's a problem, though. Most trees don't grow on cliff sides, so I'm going to remove them. To do that, I can hook up a normal to density node, which will set the density of nodes based on the surface angle. Let's debug that. And here's a problem. The points aren't rotating to the landscape, and that's because we used the landscape height node in the projection, and landscape height does not include rotation. So let's remove that and hook it up to the landscape node. Much better! Now all I need is the density filter node, which will let me remove the points on a steeper slope, which are set to a lower density by the normal to density node. I'll debug, and the cliff faces are bare. Let's pull that back a little bit, though. Point 0.4 seems good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. To finish it up, I'm going to add a self-pruning node, which will remove overlapping points. And finally, the static mesh spawner. I'm going to detour into the marketplace to get the trees I need. 
For this project, I'm going to use the Temperate Vegetation Spruce Forest Asset Pack by Project Nature. It's free on the marketplace, and it looks great. When importing it, you may run into a version mismatch. Just check the box to show all versions and select the highest version number available, 5.1 in this case, then it'll import just fine. Back to the graph, I'm going to hook up the static mesh spawner. And then in the static mesh spawner, I'm going to add a mesh entry and select the half tree as the static mesh. As a force of habit, I set the meshes to static with no collision. No collision is especially useful because spawning colliders can get expensive, and when you're dealing with a lot of objects, you want them to spawn as fast as possible. And let's take a look. <laughs> Here's a problem, they're all rotated in random directions, and that's because of the projection node. I set the rotation with it, but I never zeroed it out. I could uncheck the project rotations option, but then my normal density node wouldn't work. So instead, I'm going to add a transform points node after the density filter. This will let me reset the rotation. I check absolute rotation, and set the rotation from 0 to 360. That's fixed it. Checking absolute makes the rotation start from 0 instead of being relative to its current location. Now I can go back to the earlier transform node and remove the rotation since it's being overridden by the projection node. Now there's another thing I want to fix. Let me zoom in here, and the debug blocks are hiding it, so let me toggle them off. The trees are partly hovering off the ground. To fix that, I can go back to the transform node and set the Z position to negative 100. This loses the roots, but the trees look a lot better. It's hard to see with the outlines, so let me deselect them. There. This is looking pretty good. I just have a few more updates to do on the meshes. Now see how these trees are swaying in the wind? It looks great, but at a distance it's hardly noticeable and it can cause some frame drops. So I'm going to use the World Position Offset Distance to stop movement when the tree is far away. Let me set it to 1 to demonstrate. And here's another issue. This pack doesn't come with Nanite enabled by default, and the World Position Offset only seems to work with Nanite. So let's go into the pack and enable Nanite. Filter to Static Mesh, right-click, Enable Nanite. Back to the World view, you can see the trees have stopped moving. Let me turn that back to 0. They're moving again. I'm going to back up the view a bit until I can't really see them moving. This looks good. OK, so I want the trees to stop moving at this distance from the camera, but I don't really know how far it is. Fortunately, I have an easy reference point. I can set the instance end cull distance, and when the trees disappear, I know I've found the right distance. Let's start with 7,500. Perfect. OK, so I'll set zero culling and set the world position offset distance to 7500. Now if I'm this far away, they don't move, but if I'm closer, they do. Now that I've streamlined the tree performance, I'm going to add some more tree meshes. To keep all my previous settings, I click the dropdown on the index and select Duplicate. Then I just have to open up each one of them and select the new mesh. Duplicate is nice because you only have to set up your static mesh settings once, then you get to copy them to the rest. That's the last one, so let's take a look. And that's the upper layer of trees. Let's copy everything and make the lower trees. Just got to drag everything down so it's not overlapping. Hook up landscape to the projection node and set the outside node of our first point filter to this one. I'll change the point filter on this set of trees to be a lower bounce. Let me set it to 500 to show you what it does. You can use this lower bounds filter if you have some lowlands that you don't want the trees going into, or maybe you've set up a river or island and don't want the trees to go down to the water level. I'm going to leave it at zero because I want trees all the way to the edge of the map. Now that I've got the trees placed, I'll change their meshes over to the ones I want to use for the lower forest. The full tree meshes are a bit thicker and denser, so they'll give good coverage.
There are only three of these, so I'll delete the fourth entry. These trees look a little sparse for the forest I'm going for. I'm going to fix this by changing up the surface sampler node. I know that setting the points to 1, x and y to 75, and z to 10 will have some good results. z to 10 will let trees stack up on slopes, which I think looks pretty good. Now here's another problem. The upper trees are now too dense, so I'm going to add a density filter in there, and let's see... Density filter lets me randomly remove points because the surface sampler has set all of the nodes to a random density. I'll start with 0.4. That seems a little too dense. Let's try 0.7. There we go. One last thing. I think the two types of trees can be too close together, so I'm going to make it so that the upper trees remove the lower trees when they're close to each other, like right here. To do that, I'm going to set up a difference node. I want to remove the lower trees when there's an overlap, so I'll use the lower trees as the source and the upper trees as the difference. Change it to binary to make sure that it's removing every overlap, and it didn't work. That's because I set the z-axis to 10 in the surface sampler, so these points can look like they're overlapping without actually touching. So to fix that, I'll plug a bounds node into the upper trees before I plug them into the difference node. That will let me set their size back to something easier to work with. 75 is 7.5 times 10, so I'll start with z at 7.5, and I want this to be a little bigger, so I'll double it to 2, 2, and 15. There's still one lower tree remaining, so I'll increase z to 25 and 25, and that removed the tree. I'll zoom out for one last look at everything. The upper trees are looking a little sparse, so I'll go back to the first density filter and reduce it to 0.3. That looks great. And that's everything I have to show. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I'll catch you next time. All right, this was bothering me, so I'm just going to tidy up these nodes before ending. If I highlight the top set of nodes and press C, that'll add a comment. And I can name it Upper Trees. And I'll set it to a nice blue color. Let's see. That looks good. And I can drag, drag the comment box up. And if I highlight all of these nodes and press Q on the keyboard, that will line them up. I can do the same thing for the bottom. I'll call it Lower Trees. Can't see that, but there we go, Lower Trees. And I'll make this one green. Ooh, that's bright. All right, I'll hide them and press Q as well. And let's move this bounds modifier up. And lastly, I'll set the first three nodes, hit Q, line them up, and there we go. That's a lot nicer. Now I'm done.